As a leader, have you ever struggled with self-care? In today's episode, we're gonna talk about seven different areas of self-care. My name is Kim Nash, and welcome to Fill My Cup Vlog. Welcome to our second episode of Fill My Cup. Today, we're filling our cups at Idea Coffee in Mount Joy. In our last episode, we talked about influence and how we influence others and how it's easy to get depleted. And I hope you've been practicing the three challenges from our first episode. Number one, be aware of those around you and who you influence. Second, what are the warning signs that you are running on empty? What is your body and your mood telling you? And third, what do you do to recharge? Today, our focus is on a topic that's uncomfortable for many of us, and that is self-care. Full transparency here, this is an area that I struggle for with, and so for me, self-care feels selfish. If I'm doing something for me, then that's then I'm letting someone else down or I'm not being productive. This is how I feel. This is not true. And this is wrong thinking. Self-care is important for us when we are filling our cups so we can fill our cups with good so that we can pour out to others. We have a lot of responsibilities in our lives. We have work, we have family, we have community, and it can be challenging to find time for self-care. By the end of the day, I am absolutely exhausted. But I want to help us to explore some ways that we can invest in self-care. The first thing that we need to do is we need to take time off. Historically, I would tell you that taking time off is so difficult because I would spend a lot of time working hard to take that vacation, and then I'd be away, and then I would come back, and I would have to get caught up. And so it's like, why even bother taking time off? I found myself saving up my vacation and putting it in a sick bank so that in the event I ever got sick, I had that time saved up. So I wasn't taking much time off. But what ended up happening was my company decided to change the policy and I ended up losing all my sick time that I had put in that sick bank. And I said, you know what? I'm not gonna do that anymore and I made a commitment that I was going to take three weeks off each year um, so that I could just recharge. This summer, my husband and I did something for the very first time that we have never done before. We actually took two weeks vacation. It took two years of planning for me to be able to take that two weeks off and really recharge. My husband works in an environment where he has people that work for him and so they were able to step in for him while he was gone. But me owning my own business, I didn't have anybody. So I had to make sure that I had loose ends tied up. I had to make sure that um, everybody knew that I would be on vacation. And so if they sent me an email, they know that I wasn't ignoring them. I was able to do it. And after much planning, it was very successful. We were able to get away for the two weeks and I felt very stress-free. We all need to take a break. If you're a parent, you need time away from your children. Don't feel guilty for your mental health, but also for them to get used to being around safe people. If you don't have family that can help out with you, with with your children, one of the things that I did when I had young children was I found other parents with young children and we would swap kids and we would take time Um, watching each other's kids so that uh, you could, we could go and just get a break. So you need to have that break. Don't feel guilty about taking time away from your children. If you're a caregiver and you have a family member, an elderly parent or a special needs child, you need time away to relax. And you really should find others that can help you to take on those responsibilities so you can just get away and recharge. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Now let me talk to to managers and supervisors. If you have employees that work for you, you need to set the example. You need to demonstrate that you can take time off and that you can unplug. Show your employees that you trust them by delegating to them. Encourage employees also to take time off and unplug. Give them the opportunities so that they don't feel like I did, like, oh, I work really hard before I take vacation and then I come back and I have so much work to do. 
help to relieve some of that stress that they have and give them that opportunity to unplug and not feel guilty about it. Get other team members to pitch in and help. Also, don't, you know, we need to be careful about sending emails after hours and on weekends. We may have that opinion that we don't expect them to respond, but we're sending that message, hey, I'm working, you should work too. So if you're thinking about sending emails, put them in your draft and then send them um, on Monday morning or some other time during the week, uh, during the workday so that they don't feel obligated to respond. So take time off, that's really key. Second, we need to adopt healthy eating habits. I am not a nutritional expert, I will admit that, so I suggest that maybe you find someone who is, but I do know the term garbage in and garbage out. If I am putting garbage in my body, I'm gonna feel like garbage. So it's important that we eat and we drink healthy. And my body lets me know if I'm not doing that. Um, so I haven't been eating enough fruits and vegetables, my body will let me know. Or if I don't have enough water, I'm dehydrated, my body lets me know. So we wanna make sure that we're eating healthy and we're putting things in our body that are good for our body. Um, so I strongly encourage you to get with, if, if this is an area that you struggle with, that you get with a nutritional expert to help you. If we, I know many of us travel a lot and that is hard to eat healthy, really hard. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. For me, what I do is I look at restaurant on, online. I'll look at restaurant menus online and if they don't have healthy options, I'm on to the next menu. Um, so we need to be thinking about that. It is not convenient and it's expensive to eat healthy, but the appropriate nutrients will give us the energy that we need. So start small. You know, you don't have to change your whole eating habits right away, but start small. Maybe next time you go out, if you get a sandwich, instead of getting french fries with it, try a salad. Just small steps like that. Third, exercise. When we exercise, it releases those good chemicals, endorphins, serotonin, and again, I'm not an expert in these areas, but I do know that when I am exercising, um, I feel so much better. Um, if you're gonna start a full-blown exercise regimen, you need to work with your medical provider to help you. But I have a few suggestions to help you get started. First of all, get a Fitbit and put it on your wrist and set a daily goal. How many steps do you wanna get? Maybe you start small and you just start with 8,000 steps a day and then you move up to 10,000 steps. Um, get away from your desk. They talk about sitting is the new smoking. But so getting up and not sitting all day. Change of scenery, get outside, take a walk around your house, take a walk around the block. Um, maybe if it's bad weather, get a treadmill. I've seen now that they have treadmills that you can put with your desk and you can be walking on the treadmill while you're working. Take advantage of steps over elevators and escalators and um, you know, take that opportunity to use those steps. If you're going to a facility, park farther away from the building and get more steps in. Outdoor activities, maybe you like to ride bike, maybe you like to kayak, maybe you like to hike, maybe you like to swim. Take advantage of that, do those things. But getting outside and getting that vitamin D is so good for us, just that at lunchtime, just get up and, and go outside for a couple minutes. The fresh air and the sun, sunshine can really help our mental ability. If you're thinking about joining a gym and getting a personal trainer, that's a great idea as well. Um, if you like sports, getting out and playing some basketball, pickleball, baseball, soccer, golf, all of those things are available. Whatever you choose, just get moving and get outside when you can. Fourth is meditation. What do you put into your mind? Again, garbage in, garbage out. We have, I think back to when I was a child, we had three TV channels that we watched. Today, we have so many streaming services and so many channels. What are we putting into our head when we sit down and watch TV? What's the music that we're listening to? There's some really, some music out there that has some really bad lyrics. What kind of music are we listening to? What are we looking at in our social media? What podcasts are we listening to? What are we reading? Try to pay attention to the negative things that you're putting into your mind and look for ways for positives, to put those in your mind. We are so overwhelmed with information when it comes to the news. Limit that news. Um, you need to know what's going on in the world, but don't stay fixated on it because it is negative. So find positive things. For me, it's scripture, it's, it's contemporary Christian music. That really helps me. But for you, it could be something different. 
Number five is fun activities. What are some fun activities that you like to do? Maybe you like to work in the garden. Maybe you like to grow plants. Uh, you like to work in your yard. Maybe you like to do woodworking. Maybe you like to paint. You find painting relaxing, puzzles, crafts, renovating your home, restoring old cars, or whatever activity you have that you like to do. Find time to do that so it's a change of scenery. It's a change of pace. It's something different. So fun activities. Six um, is connecting with others. Getting together with friends and just laughing and having a good time or joining networking groups uh, where you can have some mentors or some friends that are in similar situations in leadership with you or other parents uh, that you can talk to. So think about who you can connect with and, and uh, get to know people. And the last idea that I have is sleep. <laughs> and this is another one that's been a real trouble for me. And it's just finding ways to have a good night's sleep. And when we do that, it helps us to function better. Our Fitbits will tell us how much sleep, what type of sleep we get. So again, monitoring that. So some things that we should do before we go to bed at night is number one, avoid caffeine. Um, so figure out what that caffeine intake is and eliminate that certain times a day. Stay off our devices. Um, put those devices away at a certain time at night and maybe spend time reading or doing something else that helps us to relax. Maybe uh, you have to be careful if you sit down to watch TV and you fall asleep on the sofa before bed. We call that a napetizer. You fall asleep uh, on the sofa and then you wake up and now you're ready to go to bed and you can't fall asleep. So you want to think about your before bedtime activities, what you're doing to relax you and get you ready to go. Again, good meditation before bed would be helpful. Think about your mattress. Think about the pillow that you're using, really important in your sleep. Noise reduction. So do you have an, a white noise maker that you can put on that um, drowns the outside noises so you're able to sleep? Make sure you silence your phone so that it's not going off during the night. So again, these are all some, a lot of great tips that can help us in our self-care. So remembering that self-care is important to us in order for us to pour good into others. When we're pouring good into ourselves, we can pour good into others. So over the next couple weeks, I would encourage you to think about, of these seven areas, where are some baby steps that you can take to practice self-care? Number one, how can you take some time off, whether you start with just a day or an afternoon, and just taking time off to get away? What can I do to eat better? Again, small things like maybe not having french fries as a side, maybe cutting back on your alcohol consumption um, and drinking more water. So just a couple small things like that. Exercise. Maybe I can park farther away from the building. Getting up from my desk at lunchtime and going outside and taking a walk around the block. Just small starts. Meditation. Maybe I need to look at different things to watch on TV or read, find different things to read, or music that I can listen to. What's a fun activity that I can do once a week? Something that I can just put into my schedule once a week. Connecting with others. Get together for lunch with somebody once a week. Um, join a networking group. And then finally, what can I do to get better sleep? What are some things that I can change in my before bedtime activity? So these are the seven areas that I encourage you to look at for our, over the next couple weeks. And just a reminder, our intent is to fill our cup at different locations each month. And so if you have a favorite spot that we can go to fill our cups, I would welcome the free shout out. So just let me know. So thank you again for joining us for this episode of Fill My Cup. And until next time, please take care of yourself and keep filling your cup. Fill My Cup is a joint production of Thrive LLC and Kelly Johnson Photography. Kim's book, Burn the Plow, can be purchased through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million.